this is uh, the unit I just changed these two fans on. Compressor's running nice and quiet. Sight glass is full. I um, should have put my gauges on it. He called me up the next day and said that the case, instead of at 38 degrees, the case was running at 49 degrees. So I came up here and put my gauges on it and my head pressure is only 66, 67 pounds head pressure and my suction pressure is high, it's 38, so yeah, high, low head pressure, high suction, it's MP39 in there, and it should be, this should be at like 140, and this should be, um, you know, like 20, 15, something like that, and since the two fans were bad, what happened is the head pressure got very high, and when that happens sometimes, not always, but the reeds in here broke. There's a valve plate here. And you've got reeds in here that flex up and down. And when the pressure gets too high like that, the old worn out reeds snap. And this compressor is from 1983, I think it was. So it's like 30 something years old. But this is how you check the reeds in the valve plate. I'll, uh, the front seat, the suction line all the way in. And the suction, and this, it should pump into a vacuum. See, okay, it's only, this is the, the suction line coming into the compressor. And I've got it closed off completely. And you see, it should have gone in, in into a vacuum by now, and it's not. And it'll just stay right around here. What's happening is, is that the piston's pumping the gas up through the broken reed, and then the piston goes back down again, and it pulls the gas back down. It's not moving the gas on. But that's typical of a broken reed. Sometimes the piston rods will break, too. And you'll be only working on one piston rod. But this is, uh, if I took the head off, you'd find a, I'd find a cracked reed, a broken reed in there. It's running nice and smooth. Another way to tell is, is when you put your hand on one side of it, it's very hot. The other side is cooler. This is the side over here is hot. Uh, that's where the broken reed is. Summertime, this will get so hot you could cook an egg on it. But. There's a new compressor. What I'm doing is I'm putting a semi-hermetic on. I'm taking this old uh, cast iron, uh, I mean, sorry, th that's a semi-hermetic. That's a hermetic. And they're pretty much doing away with these. Um, they're still available, but they're very expensive. And the least expensive way to go now is one of these. It does the same job. It's just a different shape. I have to, I have to pipe it in and bolt it down. See, it only pumped down to 20 pounds pressure. Not enough. Okay, now I got to reclaim the refrigerant and have some fun. I put some oil on the bolts so it'll come off easy. Okay. Okay, I'm pulling the vacuum, I mean, I'm uh, re reclaiming the refrigerant MP39 right now into the tank. And I'm down to 12 pounds, 11 pounds pressure, 7.9. It'll be a little while yet. nitrogen tank and I've got a 
got to do is I got to take this compressor out, cut the lines, put this compressor in, and then repipe it. And I have to hook up the pressure control and the fan switch. I've got, I'm going to change that because it's a uh, that's an old one. another five or ten minutes before this is all pumped out of there. Got to get the gas out of the evaporator coils. It's glass door cases downstairs. Got to get all the gas out of that and out of this system here. This is nice. It's got a suction accumulator on it. The Freon comes back and if there's any liquid in it, it'll uh, drop to the bottom of the tank. And this the other pipe takes the gas off the top of the tank to the compressor. It protects the compressor. It's a good it's a good item to have on there. I'm glad to see it's on this one. Okay. okay. Let's see. I'm, I moved this suction accumulator. It was here. I moved it over to here. Got my nitrogen run into here. I don't always point that out that I'm using the nitrogen and somebody will make a comment. Hey, didn't you use nitrogen? But um, let's see. I've got to braise these up yet. And I. Uh, the connection here is three quarter. And this was seven eighths. Then I'll insulate the line. Okay, but uh, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Freezing rod I use Dynaflow with I use Stay Silve on it. Okay, I got that one, that one, this one, these, and one right there. Got to move that pipe away from that bolt. I'll push it over once it cooled off a little bit. And I did this one, and this one, and this one. But it should be good. Now you have to put a dryer filter on it. This had a uh, an old one. This had an old sweat one on there, and I don't think it's ever been changed. And this reason I don't like sweat ones because nobody changes them. It's it's difficult. You gotta. Uh, and I f I feel that these should be changed every once in a while, and every couple years. And this that unit that was in here was from '83. No telling how long that was in here. 
That's not quite enough. I want a little bit more than that. Okay, that's, that's better. That's much better.